today for our demonstration of early electric meters we're going to uh, attempt to do a short discussion on the TRW or Thompson recording watt meter manufactured by Canadian General Electric Company of Peterborough, Ontario and uh, the first patent date that is distinguishable on this meter is 1891 uh, it is a type M and it is referred to as a recording watt meter well, some people might ask well what's the difference between the recording watt meter and an ampere hour meter the Schellenberger ampere hour meter and also the Gutman uh, type A the Gutman type A was the first induction watt, induction motor watt hour meter everything previous to that was uh, either a series uh, type of motor as is the TRW type M which we see in front of the camera this particular one <coughs> that I previously connected the leads to our 1300 watt load is uh, a 110 volt unit rated at 5 amps well obviously 1300 watts is uh, <laughs> it's a little better than twice the rating of the meter but for purposes of this demonstration it won't hurt it a whole lot now on the fact of this particular meter it has a nice a nice government seal an intact government seal from February of 1918 and it's inscribed Inland Revenue of Canada meter seal now because this thing is intact I have no desire to break into the meter uh, to uh, get at its internals the meter does work and uh, I will attempt to show you the spinning disk once we connect the load now moving over to the right we have a another Thompson recording watt meter type M that is open it had no seal so I have no problem taking it apart uh, this particular unit is a 220 volt 5 amp meter and uh, right at the present it doesn't run there's a series resistor on the back that is if a wire is broke open in a multitude of places so I have to eventually do something as far as the resistance is concerned however the uh, internals look look uh, just about alike and uh, here on the bottom you can see the the, the disc that turns and if you look up up top between the, these two electromagnets you'll see a spinning coil now that spinning coil goes to a commutator and a set of brushes in the rear of the meter now as we turn this meter around this is the resistor of its bed that's open now in the very top of the meter uh, right here is the commutator turn the camera up a little bit here we have the commutator and the set of brushes now these meters were originally designed for DC circuits before AC came into widespread usage uh, because of the fact that they are a commutator type motor meter because they were made to run on a DC they will actually run on AC just as well and uh, they were used 
uh, both on DC and AC circuits. Uh, you can see the the uh, retarding magnet on either side of the disc and uh, however this was not an induction type meter as I mentioned previously. Now we're going to go over and uh, energize our our 1300 watt load and I'm back on the 120 volt or 110 volt meter. Some of these things were rated actually at 100 volts. Now, because of the way the light is, it may be difficult to see the spinning disc inside the the uh, bottom window. I'm gonna get up here as close as I can. That disc doesn't seem to have a black mark on it. If it if it ever did, then the paint has come off. But if you watch really carefully, you can see a sort of a silver reflector going by. Now, again, we'll focus on our incandescent lamp load, which we've used in our previous demonstrations, the larger lamp being a thousand watt and the smaller one being 300 watts. So, <coughs> That presently is what is energizing our our meter. It's unfortunate that uh, in one way that the meter has a nice intact antique seal on to it, otherwise I'd take the cover off it for the purposes of the demonstration. But again, if we look at the one that has the cover off it, Right in, right in the top between between these two pole pieces again, you can see the the uh, turning armature. All this disc in the bottom is just simply in there for uh, a braking mechanism to uh, regulate the speed. Uh, it operates somewhat the same as our original Schallenberger ampere hour meter. Uh, the coil assembly is a little different. Of course, I have to stay away from each other's patent rights. That's for sure. Anyway, the, uh, <coughs> the meter, if you can see the disc or see the register, on the front. It's marked in watt hours. A thousand watt hours, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, one million, and ten million watts or watt hours. So it'll take, take quite a while to uh, <laughs> spin, a, spin ten megawatts through it, that's for sure. Anyway, um, this is about all I can uh, really uh, do as far as the demonstration on the TRW is concerned. Uh, again, I, the uh, 110 volt one turns up uh, infrequently and uh, I have never seen another 220 volt one other than this one in the collection, which uh, does need some repairs, but uh, that's something for a little later on. Anyway, that's all for for the uh, demonstration on the the uh, Type M Thompson recording watt meter, and uh, I hope you find this these uh, presentations somewhat interesting. Thank you very much.